In today's video, I'm really excited to cover all the steps required to get started with VR development by using the Oculus Quest DevTools and also the Interaction SDK. So to get started, we're gonna need system and VR requirements as follows. You're gonna need at least 2.0 gigahertz of processor and two gigs of system RAM. Windows 10 64-bit, I really recommend that you use that because it's the only one that supports connecting to the actual device by using Unity in play mode. Or if you want to use macOS, you can use macOS Sierra 1010, but it doesn't support Oculus Link. You're also going to need an Oculus Quest 1 or an Oculus Quest 2. Unity versions, you can use Unity 2020 LTS or Unity 2021 LTS. And we're going to be using the XR plugin framework to basically set things up. You're also going to need what's called the Oculus integration, which is going to be the SDK2 code against the Oculus devices. I know that was a lot, guys, but let's go ahead and jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, we got a lot to do today. And to start, we're going to be installing the versions of Unity that are supported with Oculus development and the interaction SDK. So just to get started, make sure that you have Unity Hub 3.2.0 or greater, which is a version that I am using today. And then we're going to be either using 2020 or 2021 LTS. That's what is currently supported. So I'm going to be installing the 2021, which is the latest. And you can see here that it says LTS as a recommended version. So make sure that you install that. If you have a reason for not installing 2021, you can do 2020.3.38 F1 as of today. So let's go ahead and click on install. And then if you have Visual Studio already installed like I do, you don't need to install Visual Studio Community 2019. In my case, I'm using a professional version, but, or if you're using something like Writer or a different IDE, you don't really need to get that going. Then click on Android Build Support and also open JDK and also the Android SDK and NDK tools. And then make sure you have enough space that's going to tell you in here what you need, which is, which is a lot, but there's a lot of tools that come with the setup. So let's go ahead and hit continue. We're going to be agreeing to the Android SDK and NDK license. You can go ahead and read it, or you can just click on install. And then this is going to take a few minutes to install. So we'll just go ahead and download another component that we're going to need as that is installing. So if we go in here, you're also going to need the Oculus software to be able to run the applications right within Unity. So if you want to tether and connect to your actual device, to your Oculus Quest or Oculus Quest 2, we're going to be using something called Link Cable, which is also connected via USB-C on one end, and then the other end is USB 3.0. So I'll put a link to a cable that I recommend. You can also use a cable that comes with the Quest or the Quest 2. Just click on Download Software, and then we're going to get that downloaded. I already have it installed, but I'll just show you. I just wanted to show you where that was. So just make sure you go to this link to get it installed. When you get that set up and installed, you're going to get something similar to what I have right here. So if I do search for Oculus, you're going to see that I have the Oculus app already installed. And you're just going to associate your Facebook account to this so that you can you can basically look at your library. You can connect to the device. I don't have the, the device connected, but you can see all my devices in here all connected in just a minute because we're going to have to set it up as developer mode. But for now, know that this is kind of like an application just to be able to look at your library, to look at you know all the games that you have downloaded and apps and also different settings. So let's go ahead and just minimize that. And then the other thing that you're going to need, and you're going to go into developer.oculus.com downloads, native-android. If you scroll all the way up, you're going to see that we have an Oculus Developer Hub. And this is a really powerful tool to be able to either connect to your device, send commands to your device by using Android tools. You can also cast record, take screenshots, and there's just a lot of features in here. You can look at logs and additional information. So we're just going to go ahead and download that. Okay, so it looks at like the Oculus Developer Hub finish downloading. Let's go ahead and show in folder. And then we can also extract that in here. I'm going to go ahead and extract it to the send directory. And then we can just double click on the actual setup to get it installed. Let's go ahead and hit install. I think that location is completely fine. And we'll just wait for these to complete installing. And we can go ahead and launch it. Let's go ahead and click Finish. OK, so we got the Oculus Developer Hub installed. And this is where you can go in and connect your device, look at different commands. So 
while we have Unity running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect my, my device. So I have this currently connected via USB-C. So you guys can see in here, there's a USB-C connection, and then there's a USB 3.0 on the, on the other end. So the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you download the Oculus application either for Android or iOS. In my case, I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro, so I already have it downloaded. And once you open it up, you're going to be basically connecting that to your Facebook account. If you already have it set up like I do, you can just go into the menu and then you can go into devices. And if you haven't added a device yet, you can click on and select the plus symbol. And once you do the plus symbol, you can select what device you want to basically connect. In my case, I already have the Oculus Quest 2 and it's already nearby, so we can go ahead and select it. And it's gonna tell us here if it's connected, what the battery level is, also the controller battery. We can also use and, and basically set up different settings in here. We can go into developer mode, which is what I want to do for this video. Let's go ahead and enable that. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna hear a beat on your computer saying that you, you know, that it wants to connect via USB. So that's everything that we need to do on your mobile device. Okay, so now that we have everything connected, it's already set to developer mode. If you were to open the Oculus app and go to devices, you're gonna see that it now shows as connected. And this is a good sign. This means that we have it connected to the Oculus application and it should allow us to do and perform Oculus Link features. So if we minimize this, let's do and check the same thing on the Oculus Developer Hub. If we go in here, you can see that now we can get more information about the devices, what applications are here. I think I can even uninstall applications right from here. If I wanted to, I can power it off. I can restart it. I can cast the device. We can also look at performance. We can look at the file manager. And there's just a lot of information that we can get from here and also basically run custom ADB commands. So we can go ahead and close out of this. We should be all good to go. Let's go ahead and go into Unity now. It looks like the 2021.3.8, it's already installed. So we're gonna go into projects and I'm gonna create a brand new project. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it should show you here the version that we just installed. You can click on it as well. And you can see that 2021.3.8F1 is the latest available. And then I'm just gonna select 3D here. You can use URP as well, and which is this one right here. And, but I'm gonna just, you know, pretend that we're using just 3D and then just the standard rendering pipeline. And then what we can do in here, you can select the location. I think the location for my files, I normally just do code. So let me go ahead and get back into that. And then we can just select that folder. The project in this case, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna call it Meta Interaction ASDK Samples. And we can go ahead and click on Create Project. Okay, so while that is actually creating the project, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into here. And we're gonna download the Oculus Integration SDK. You can also get these from the Unity Asset Store. I normally just go directly to developer.oculus.com, downloads, package, Unity Integration, and then just make sure that you use the latest version, which is 42 as of today, and just click on download. And I have agreed to the license. So let's go ahead and click on download. All right, guys, so we got the project created. We also have the Oculus integration already downloaded. So if we were to go in here, you're gonna see that I have this package, which we're going to be importing in just a minute. So first, let's go to File and then Build Settings. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add, we can just add the sample scene just to have something as a placeholder. And then we're gonna go into Android and I'm going to be switching the platform. Okay, so it looks like that was already switched. And then on the texture compression, it's recommended to use the ASTC. So I'll just go ahead and set it to that. You can also see here that as soon as we do that, it's gonna reload everything. And we should also see our device listed on the run device. Okay, let's make sure that we have that. And you can see that we have that, that in there. We're not gonna be building just yet, but I just wanted you to know that that is available there. Let's go ahead and close out of this menu. And then go back into our downloads. And I'm gonna double click on the Oculus Integration is going to tell you where you want to load these to. So I'm going to load it under the 2021.3 AF1. And we can go ahead and minimize this. Okay, so this is everything that is going to be available when you download this package. It's going to show you everything that is going to import. So I'm just going to import everything. Let's click on import. Okay, so you should get a message saying that it needs to update the Oculus Utilities plugin. It says the current version is unknown. I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. Go ahead and update it and 
We can use OpenXR. I think it's fine. We can just do use OpenXR. It's also available. We're going to be basically setting it up in the future for pass through. So we can just do OpenXR. And it says OVR plugin with OpenXR backend will be activated. And this is not the OpenXR that Unity ships out of the box. This is the OpenXR available as part of the Oculus integration. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And we can just say that the don't show this again. There are some assets that were deprecated. It's going to go ahead and hit close. And then upgrade the specializer. Hit restart. OK, so when the project opens up, just make sure that you have the Oculus folder in here listed. I'm also going to go into list view so that we can see everything. You can see that we have the interaction SDK, which is what I want to focus on in these videos. And then what I'm going to look at is let's look at one of the examples here where we have pictures. And we can go into hand grab and double click it. And we can double click on one of these so that we can see everything. Just make sure that everything is rendering correctly. We can also resize the gizmos in here so we can see more about the actual scene. You can also toggle it on and off if you wanted to. So we can read that information. So it looks like this is good to go. So before we run this, I want to set up a couple more things that we're going to need. So make sure that we go to File, and then we're going to go into Build Settings. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this scene. We're going to be adding the one that we have right now so that we can make sure that, that it's going to run OK. Then we can go into Player Settings. And this is what we're going to be focusing for the most part right now. Then the company name, you can do, you know, in my case, we can do Learn XR LLC. This is going to be, you know, obviously your company name. And then your product name is going to be, you know, whatever you want that to be. Then the version, I think I'm just going to do 100. I think that's completely fine. The color space, though, make sure you set it to linear. And we're going to do change to linear. And it's going to basically re set all the textures that we have in the project. So let's just wait for that. OK, so it looks like that it's completed. Let's go ahead and uncheck the Auto Graphics API as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this one down. The one that we're going to use is going to be OpenGL ES3. That's the one that is currently supported. Vulkan is currently on Experimental. So make sure that you have that set. Then we're also going to be enabling multi-threaded rendering. I think that it's going to help with performance. And the other thing that we also need to do, I also need to check the Android version. So if you scroll down here to the minimum API level, we're going to be using version 29. So make sure you set this to Android 10.0 API level 29. And then on the target API level here, we can use the automatic highest install. I think that is what is currently recommended. Then on the other, other settings that we also need to do here, let's go ahead and uncheck the ARM v7. And we're going to be enabling ARM64. But before we are able to do that, you're going to have to change this to be IL2 CPP, which is going to allow for more cross-platform support. And it basically allows to target more devices. That's what the documentation was saying. But basically, this is the setup that you'll need to be able to deploy this to the device. Then on the actual uh, install location, because it's going to be required for deploying to the actual device, you can set this to install location automatic and then the internet access is going to be required if you want to basically make this available for the Oculus App Store. And I think everything else in here should be OK. Just want to make sure that we have all the settings currently set up correctly. OK, so the next thing that we need to look at is going to be under XR Plugin Management. It's going to be basically the workflow for the what we use for Oculus development. So click on Install XR Plugin Management. It's going to allow us to install the Oculus XR plugin. OK, so it looks like that got installed. Then make sure that we enable that for Android. You can see the platform right here. And it's going to install the Oculus XR plugin for Android. And we're also going to do the same thing for Windows because we want to be able to run with the actual link in play mode. So if we hit play in Unity, we should be able to see it right on the device without having to deploy every single time. We can also go here into Windows, which is going to be Windows, Mac, Linux setting. And let's make sure that we have also the Oculus plugin enabled. So once we have that, there's also other settings in here that you can look at, such as stereo rendering mode, single or multi-pass, share the buffer, dash support, and also additional settings for Android if you want to look at that. There's also some different 
you know, experimental features available like late latching and some of these ones which I'll cover in the future. And also if you want to target Oculus Quest 1 and Oculus Quest 2, then you can also enable that in here. So now let's go into quality and let's make sure that we have a few changes in here. I'm gonna set the pixel light count to one. We also need to change this to be to per texture. And this is based on some of the recommendations from Oculus. You also wanna make sure that we uncheck soft particles. I'm also going to be changing the anti aliasing to 4X. This is based on, again, on their recommendation. So the next thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that you guys have everything set up correctly. So I'm gonna go into settings and let's go into system. And if you go under system, you're gonna see quest link. Make sure that you have that enabled. That way we can connect to that uh, during with Unity during play mode and then go into developer. Also make sure that you have the USB connection dialog on so we can see, you know, the permission request. And on the software side, this is a version that I'm currently running. So system version, it's that number, the version of the OS is 43.0.0. So I'm using, you know, V42 on the Oculus integration and then 43 on the operating system. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to connect via Quest Link so that we can connect it via Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and do Quest Link connection. All right, so it looks like the Oculus Link has been enabled. So now if we go back into Unity, I should now be able to hit play. You can also make sure that everything is working by just going here into devices, make sure that everything is connected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and I should be able to interact with Oculus Link right from within Unity. And you can see that now everything works. The only thing that doesn't work is I can't now see my hands. Let me try and see if I can connect the controllers. You can see the controllers are currently working. I can basically, you know, press the trigger buttons and then also move some of the different buttons on the controller, but I can't really interact with it and, and anything in the scene, but we'll fix, we'll fix that. So we know that this is currently working. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to basically enable some of the hand tracking capabilities, right? So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Oculus and you're gonna see that we have this Oculus project config. And right now, this is only have the controllers only. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do controllers enhance. And it's also gonna allow you here to determine whether we're using a low frequency, a high frequency or a max frequency, but you can test with that. And also if you wanna use you know, V1 or V2 of hand tracking, I'm just gonna go ahead and do V2 just for now. And then if you wanna use you know, pass-through capabilities, you can do that as, as well here. There's also additional settings in here that you can, you can look at. So now that we have those enabled, now what we can do is we can go ahead and go back into play and let's make sure that hand tracking now works. All right guys, so it looks like I had an issue with running OpenXR with this version of Unity. If that happens in Oculus Link, you can go into the actual tools in here and then OVR Utilities plugin. And make sure that you set this to OVR plugin to legacy. And, and then that should work with the Oculus Link. I'll find out why is that the case, but for now we can just try that. And then on the future videos I can do I can look into and see why that it's causing issues with OpenXR. There's also an issue with OpenXR and with the thumb finger in a specific action. So all I think for now we can just use the regular backend instead of the OpenXR backend. Okay, so once you do that, we should be able now to hit play and we should be able to do hand tracking. Let's make sure that this it's going to work. And you guys can see now that my hands are currently and rendering and we can go and look in here and then see if I can interact with the cup and we can interact fully interact with the cup I can it's basically you know adjusting to the hand poses that this demo currently has and everything it's everything it's currently working this is actually really really cool so you can basically grab the handle and you can do another interaction by using your fingers so I'm gonna try this with the other hand and I am squeezing all the way through. You can see that I'm letting go of one of my fingers and then I'm using the spray bottle. You can also grab it from the bottom. It basically will adjust right to where I'm grabbing it. It basically adjusts to the top, right, automatically. Even if I grab it from the bottom, it basically snaps back. And that's because that is the hand 
pose and gesture that has been configured with this. So the last thing that I want to show you is what about actually building to a device? So we already set everything up in the player settings. We look at quality settings and basically everything is ready for us to be able to deploy it. So all you need to do is just basically add a scene to your scenes and build, which we added the hand grab. We can also just go ahead and remove this one and add the one that we were just playing with, which I think it's is actually cooler. And then you can also, you know, do a development build if you wanted to, you know, make sure that you get additional debugging information or you can uncheck that. And then just select the device that we're going to be deploying to. I'm going to select the Oculus Quest 2. And then we can select the location. This is going to be, and just say it's going to be in Hello World. And then we can hit Save. And basically that it's going to deploy to the device. All right, guys, so it looks like these build successfully. Let's go ahead and make sure that that is the case. So I'm going to go into Unknown Sources. And you can see that the app name that we just created, Meta Interaction SDK Samples, is already here. So let's make sure that everything is working. I can see the Unity logo just fine. I can also track my hands and I can also grab the bottle. Let me try and grab the bottle. And you can see that, that it's all successfully working. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe because it's going to allow me to bring you many more videos and stay tuned for video two where we're going to be working on more interaction SDK features. Thank you very much, guys.